السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all May Allah bless every one of us and grant us forgiveness on this beautiful night of the month of Ramadan one of the last 10 nights happening to be one of the odd from among the last 10 nights and a great likelihood that it is perhaps the night of decree may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it such that we liven the nights that are odd during this beautiful month of Ramadan Remember, my brothers and sisters, the dua to be made is Allahumma inna ka afuun tu hibbul afwa fa'fu anna aw fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you love to forgive. You are most forgiving. You are most forgiving. You love to forgive. So forgive me. Because the aim is to achieve forgiveness during this night. And that forgiveness will result in the freedom from hellfire. Imagine your name written from among those whom the fire of Jahannam will not touch. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write our names from among them. Amen. My brothers and sisters, for us to realize the greatness of this beautiful month of Ramadan, we need to look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his character, his conduct, especially during the month of Ramadan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is described by his own companions as being the most generous of people. They say he was so generous. He was the most generous during the month of Ramadan, even though outside the month of Ramadan, he was still the most generous of the lot. What is generosity? Generosity is when we reach out to others, when we give others that which we have, when we share what we have. No matter what you have, you share it. If it is a piece of knowledge, you share it. You are generous with your knowledge. If it is a piece of information that is beneficial, you share it. If it is something material you have, your wealth, you share it. If it is your time, you share it. You share it such that you touch the lives of others. Today, we have become the opposite. We have become selfish. Each one wants everything for himself, including your time. We no longer give time to our spouses, to our children, to our parents, to our brothers and sisters, and to our relatives. Yet, in Islam, the bond of relationship is to be kept solid. And we are supposed to be fulfilling the rights of relatives. We are talking of distant relatives. They are known as Dawil Arham those who are related to us through the wombs. Imagine those who are closer, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, your children. What about the relationship with them? My beloved brothers and sisters, tonight is a night whereby we should soften the heart. That is a sign of acceptance. Make sure that you go out of your way to resolve the problems and the matters and the disputes that you have within your family to start with. The intention must be made now and the follow-up must happen as soon as possible inshallah by the barakah and the blessings given and sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us on such beautiful occasions we will succeed inshallah to resolve the matters within the family those who are fighting battling as spouses it is time we looked into our relationship and we tried to improve ourselves so that the marriage is not broken, so that we can make amends, so that we can actually sacrifice for one another in a way that the children are saved, we are saved. We lead a life of goodness that is within the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now remember, tonight is known as, or one of the nights whereby it could well be Laylatul Qadr. The Quran speaks about Laylatul Qadr being better than a thousand months approximately 84 years this night allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fiha yufraqu kullu amrin hakim on this night 
all the instructions are actually written down the wise instructions what are these instructions let's take a look at surat al-qadr the same surah named after the same night allah says tanazzalu al-malaikatu war-ruhu fiha bikulli let's hear bi-idhni rabbihim min kulli amr subhanallah the angels come down with by the permission of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with every instruction so the details of what is to come for the next year are written down subhanallah let's make dua that allah blesses us with the best year to come may allah grant us sustenance may allah grant us barakah if we want that sustenance and barakah we need to make the first step and that is get close to Allah. He's the owner of the sustenance. He's the owner of the barakah. What's the point of us making dua tonight? And we don't even have a plan to read Salatul Fajr. And we don't even have a plan to quit the sins we're involved in and to earn the pleasure of Allah. To make Allah happy, we're not worried. But we want Allah to answer what we want. It doesn't make sense. Allah tells us what to do we need him desperately we're supposed to be doing it without any batting of an eyelid subhanallah but we want allah to do things for us and we haven't even moved yet we are in desperate need of allah allah doesn't need us subhanahu wa ta'ala so i call on yourselves and myself to develop a better relationship with allah you can do better you can do much better you can develop a relationship with the quran it's the month of the Quran. We want goodness. We want forgiveness. Well, then turn to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn to salah. Turn to the goodness that Allah has provided. Cut the bad habits and the sins for the sake of the same Allah. You will find the blessings in your life. But if you're not prepared to cut the sins, then how do you expect to see blessings? If we're not prepared to cut what will anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then even that which seems to be a blessing may actually turn out to be a huge punishment. This is why my brothers and sisters, a powerful dua. Take a look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to say, Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Oh Allah, who turns the hearts in whose hands lies the control of the hearts, the turning of the hearts. Turn our heart towards the deen. Let our heart come towards what is right. Because Allah owns the hearts. So it's important for us to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator whom we are going to return to within our lives, we need to make amends regarding our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very, very, generous and the same hadith says kana ajwada ma yakunu fi ramadan hina yalqahu jibril fayudarisuhu alquran when he used to meet jibril alayhi salam in ramadan and they used to go over the verses of the quran together he used to become even more generous you know how generous ajwada min arrih almursala the hadith says more generous than the wind that blew you know, I walked in just now, it was actually raining outside and very windy. And subhanallah, that wind, every single person who is outside, no matter how many thousand they may be, they all feel the wind at the same time. So the hadith says, the generosity of the Prophet ﷺ was such that everyone could feel it at the same time. <laughs> Amazing. Subhanallah, what a description more generous than the wind who would have ever thought that the wind would be described as being generous subhanallah amazing description it means it reaches everyone so much so one of the characteristics of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was a miracle given to him was the people who used to sit around him not a single one of them would feel that there is anyone else more loved by him than me. Everyone felt like I'm the closest to him. The, the other one feels I'm the closest to him. He feels I'm the closest to him. At the same moment, everyone feels like, you know what? I'm the closest to him. That was his relationship with them. How much time do we give people? Do we smile? Do we actually develop some small habits that make big changes in our lives? 
Many of us are miserable, not because our lives are miserable, but because our expressions are miserable. That's the reason. Our attitude is miserable, not the reality of what you're going through. No, we, we all go through challenges, but some go through a challenge with a smile. And others, they go through the biting of a mosquito on the skin with depression and medication. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and assist us. So my beloved brothers, it's obviously a beautiful evening. Each one of us searching for the forgiveness of Allah. I ask you a question. Are you prepared to forgive those who have wronged you? It's just a question. Think about it. Those who have wronged you tonight, are you prepared to forgive them? Are you prepared to have a big heart and say, this person did this to me, my family members did this to me, that one did that to me, and you know what, oh Allah, I want you to bear witness that I've taken everything out of my heart and I've forgiven them for your sake. If you can do that, my brothers and sisters, there is a greater chance that you will achieve the forgiveness of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah An-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَن يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ You should make amends and embrace each other. Wouldn't you like that Allah forgives you for your sins? For indeed Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. So if you want Allah to forgive your sins, you need to try to develop the quality of forgiving others for their sins. And that's when you find there is a greater chance. And I explain to you why. Allah is merciful, the most merciful. When you show a little bit of mercy, He will show mercy multiplied by a thousand or more towards you because you showed mercy. Subhanallah. The hadith says, Allah does not have mercy on those who don't have mercy on other people. Subhanallah. And when the Prophet ﷺ shed a tear once, he was asked, what is this tear? And he said, This is a sign of the mercy of Allah that Allah has placed in the hearts of his worshippers who are merciful. So that is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one. Number two is, say you don't forgive someone, there's a chance someone might have wronged you. Say, listen, I'll sort you out on the day of judgment. I think I've heard people say this. We fight with each other. We argue with each other. We're not prepared to forgive each other. Sometimes we were married to each other and after divorce, the war goes on so bad that you know what? We put the superpowers of the globe to shame. Subhanallah. The way we operate with each other. You know? Subhanallah. There is a a statement of mass destruction that comes out of my mouth and a statement of mass destruction that comes out of her mouth and the next best thing we know is families are destroyed. Now, if you say to someone, I'll sort it out on the day of judgment, it would seem that you are quite convinced that you are right, right? Now say you arrive on the day of judgment, standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for some technicality, you turned out to be wrong. It's too late. <laughs> now what happens? The judgment is passed by the owner of the day of judgment. And he passes the judgment that you were wrong. And the person whom you said that we're going to sort you out on the day of judgment was actually right. Because there was a technicality you didn't know. Allah knows it and he shows it to you. What happened? You lost. Now it's too late because on that day, on that day, your wealth won't help you, your children won't help you. The only thing that will help you when you come with a sound heart. Except he who comes on that day with a solid, sound heart, free of sickness, that person is not to worry at all. May Allah grant us that heart. For that heart, you need to forgive people. You need to worship Allah alone. You need to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you need to understand the others are all human beings created by the same Allah. Fulfill their rights. So if you were to resolve your matter here, the chances of you getting away on the day of judgment with 
So much is far greater, far greater. Because I resolved my matter in the dunya. Sometimes you may have to give and take. Sometimes you might have to even say you are sorry when you know that you are not really wrong. But if that's what would solve your problem with your father, mother, or your spouse, or a close family member or friend, so be it. We should get used to it sometimes. I'm not saying allow people to trample over you when they are wrong, you are right, and they are usurping your rights. No, don't give them a green light because then they may do it to others. But we are talking of within reasonable limits. Something minor. You have a small problem. Do not allow an issue to escalate to the degree that both of you are actually void of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't allow it to escalate. When you have a problem, solve it there and then straight away. Why do I say all of this? Because my brothers and sisters, all of us, without exception, we are sinful to, cert to different extents. We are sinful. That's the nature of man. We commit sin, minor sins, sometimes even major sin, depending on who it is. We are in desperate need of the forgiveness of Allah. So Allah says, oh my worshippers, I give you an Eve. That Eve is Laylatul Qadr. You say, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. If that is accepted once, everything wiped out. Allahu Akbar. So let's repeat this, inshallah. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. We ask Allah to forgive us. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, when we love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we definitely arrive on a very, very high level because it's not easy. If it was something easy, it wouldn't have been spoken about with such a great reward. When Allah has kept a huge reward for something, that thing is not so easy. Remember that. Allah says, you forgive people, we will call you on the day of judgment and allow you to choose what you want from what we have kept in store for you on that particular day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and ease. The days and the nights of this month of Ramadan are drawing to an end. What has happened in the past and what we've done in the first 25, 27 days, it's already gone. Too late to talk about it. If we haven't done much, get serious from tonight. We have very few nights left. Let's get for Salat al-Taraweeh on time. By the way, from tomorrow, I have good news for you. News that everyone would love. The time that it's going to take to fulfill Salat al-Taraweeh will be less than half of what it was taking through the whole month. But sadly, the crowd is also less than half. <laughs> Shouldn't it be the other way around? <laughs> Subhanallah. The time is going to be less. Let's all come to the masjid. Come and read the, read the Taraweeh. Come. These are the most powerful days. You know, when there is a football match, you tell me which are the most interesting minutes of that match. The last few minutes, right? Anything could happen, especially when it's not, not, subhanallah, we haven't yet scored a goal. So you go into overtime and they're giving you a chance to score a goal. Same way, if you don't see the moon, guess what it is? Going into overtime, giving you a chance to score the goal. One more day of Ramadan, it might happen this year, perhaps. The moon is going to be 13 odd hours old at sunset. I don't know if it's going to be possible to even see it. According to the man cakers, I don't think it's going to be possible. <laughs> but we still have to go out and try and hunt for it. And if it's not sighted, you should get more excited. Subhanallah. More excited. You know why? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You have one more day to earn the forgiveness that you haven't earned throughout the first 29 days. That's a blessing of Allah. Let's get serious. If you haven't read the Quran so far, pick it up tonight. Read the Quran. Start with the intention, Oh Allah, I'm going to complete this thing, inshallah, at some stage, but I'm starting now. Allah will give you the reward of the whole completion. That's Allah. But let's do something. More, be motivated. Be in the right company. Have a good vibe within you that will push you towards what is right and away from that which is wrong. This is the month of Ramadan. We are blessed with this month. I have one more message for you, subhanallah. And that is, after Ramadan, let's consolidate what we've gained, subhanallah. Imagine you build a house in Jannah, and after Ramadan, you're taking the bricks down one by one. Come on, why? Wallahi, it's a fact. 
On the day of Eid, we take down the window frames and the door frame, it's coming out. Why? We're starting to do haram again. No, you built a house during Ramadan. Keep it. Now put up the roof, inshallah, get ready for it. When you die, you have it there. Do not start disintegrating and don't start taking it to pieces because you need that house. You did such great work in Ramadan. Subhanallah, don't let it go by. Don't let it be wasted, my brothers and sisters. And how do we waste it? Number one, dirtying the heart. Heart becomes dirty. So we start feeling jealousy, hatred, envy, deception. Everything else goes in the heart. Why? Keep it clean. Keep it good. Avoid backbiting. Avoid these things that will destroy that house of yours in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to build this house. And every time we do good deeds, we are adding luxury to that home. Imagine you've built a house, right? And then it takes a bit of time because houses nowadays are expensive to build, subhanAllah. And nowadays we become lazier to obey Allah's instruction because we're too comfortable living, mashallah, in a comfort zone. So it's hard to go out for salah. It's hard to do those things. And it's very easy to commit sin. But if you've built your house, you now need furniture. You now need a good air conditioning system. You now need beautiful lighting. You need lovely water. You need a, a generator in case ESCOM doesn't provide electricity one day. You need, for example, something else. You need so much of the, the facility there. Everything should be automatic and the latest. Then you've got to add a car into the garage, right? And that car needs to be a Ferrari, no longer a Lamborghini, subhanAllah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So all of that requires an effort. We are ready to make that effort for the worldly house. My brothers and sisters, wallahi, we have a house in the Akhirah, which is more important, more everlasting. In fact, it is everlasting. We need to work for that. Don't spoil it. Don't go back and start destroying what you have, intentionally taking a hammer and, and hitting your, your car. No one would do that. But that's what we do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding our provision of the Akhirah. Don't waste it. Fulfill your salah, fulfill your fajr outside Ramadan. Come for Salatul Isha. There's no longer a long taraweeh outside Ramadan. It's short, it's straight to the point. It's just Salatul Isha and you need to do your witr and that's it. And you've gone home, go and sleep thereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in this month and the next months inshallah. Month of Shawwal is around the corner and I pray that we can all fast at least those six fasts of Shawwal. They don't have to be consecutive. They can be anytime during Shawwal, starting from the second of Shawwal. So make an intention here and now. I want to give you another quick gift. Do you know at the moment we have almost the shortest fast in the whole world? Did you ever know that? In the whole world, it's, it's almost, astaghfirullah, it's almost like a joke compared to those up north in Europe and so on. They are fasting 22 hours, 18 hours, etc. Ours is 11, 11 odd hours, just over 11, 11 and a half hours and we're done. Subhanallah. So why don't we just fast those six fasts of Shawwal? They are short, Subhanallah, very short. Don't be lazy by the will of Allah. When you are fasting, it will save you from so many other sins. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us during this beautiful month of Ramadan and this lovely eve. Allah has given it to us as a gift. He kept the season because he knows we need it. And subhanallah, we are seated in his house. Who would believe that at three o'clock in the morning, we're sitting in the house of Allah as fresh as ever. All of us, thousands of us sitting here trying to listen to something that will bring us closer to Allah. I pray that whatever I've said will help us all become closer to Allah. Maintain that relationship. Maintain the closeness to Allah. One day, subhanallah, you will see the fruit of this beautiful relationship that you have with your own Rabb. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك